to Sanda, Brogan, and, and Roy, uh, feel free to go ahead and pipe on in. Uh, I'm used to folks. I'm a, I'm, as, as a cable news anchor, as I often say, I'm used to people, you know, getting in on it. Just be nice to each other. Uh, this is peace one day, okay? Uh, and, and we must carry that culture and that energy forward through our conversation. I don't think that's going to happen here. Sanda, you know, one of the things uh, I had done was uh, my the, the group of researchers that uh, I had gathered to look into some of the ideas for the book, looked into some research that was done at Stanford. And an interesting dynamic was they looked at pairings of people that did not get along. Like just say, you and I didn't like each other because uh, you're black, I'm Asian. And we walked into a room in a business context and by qualitative and quantitative measures, by cortisol, by dopamine, by the, the questionnaire, we didn't get along. Like it was, it was get, not getting along up to this high level. But after three meetings, you and I gathering for a lunch or a coffee, guess where that went? It all went down to just above zero. And, and that I thought, did we need a study, first of all, to prove that out to us? I guess we did. I guess we do, right? And that also, in terms of a business practice, told me when you have a team that says, oh, we could not make that relationship work, my first question would be, did you meet with them three times? Did you meet with them three times? What is some of the ideas and strategies that you've heard in the UN Global Compact, which gets together all the, the biggies, if you will, of, cor of the corporate world, together to try to change the, some of the dynamics that the UN stands for. What have you heard from those members about what is working either at the boardroom level or on the ground in operations when it comes to diversity and inclusion? Right, thanks. And that's a really inter interesting statistic, the, the, the three meetings that, that you talk about, because I think at the end of the day, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's people, it's, it's relational, it's, it's really yeah. you know, about the humanness that, that we have and really lowering this tempo around inequalities and, and perceptions, because at the end of the day, everybody really is, is human. Now, I think, you know, one of the really important things, I just want to reflect on actually a study that we did at the UN Global Compact, and we surveyed about a thousand companies and you know what we found in that survey was that about less than half of the companies had targets that held their leadership accountable for mm. diversity and inclusion and so when you talk about the question of what environment did you set what what culture do you create in an office we often find that we are talking a lot about diversity and inclusion but perhaps where a gap is in business and business practice is really setting an accountability framework so that people are responsible for making sure that they create the opportunity for those three meetings or you know it could be you're interviewing someone and you just don't give them a chance because they don't look like you they don't sound like you or mm -hmm. they don't reference the same points that you do so i think you know at the very top what's really important is to set the leadership tone in a business and there has to really be that commitment around diversity around inclusivity and really around continuously improving the the, the climate and the culture in an organization um you know looking at this the survey you know about 30 only 38 percent of companies had actually publicly announced the diversity and inclusion targets or their aspirations mm -hmm. Uh, 13% only had, had had done an annual review of where they stood on DNI. So, you know, it's not enough to just talk about it, but how do we keep it alive and practice it and, and keep it going in an organization? I think that's some of the really important pieces. But you know what we do here, and I think it's really great, there is an awareness, as we said, and a lot of CEOs continue to express a desire to have more diverse and inclusive workplaces. They know what the value of that diverse and inclusive workplace is. And certainly at this point in time, with you know heightened citizen awareness, heightened consumer awareness, people know that the world is watching. And yeah. you cannot mm -hmm. afford to be a company that is sitting on the wrong side of history on, on these kinds of issues. Um, I think what's also really important is to examine, you know, uh, the, the, the piece about, um, and I think my colleague from Heineken mentioned this, you know, what do you do around inculcating or learning through a whole culture and not just being you know, um, you know, and, and being, you know, positively anti-racist. It's not about just being neutral about the issue. You have to also speak out. It's silence 
is not an action that, that will be neutral anymore. Silence has its own interpretation. So leadership, people have to be decidedly anti-racist. Otherwise, you are actually supporting the racist action, the racist action as, as it stands in and of itself. So I think a couple of things, you know, businesses need to be able to articulate this in terms of policy. They need to define a framework. They need to show a framework, demonstrate that they're working towards it, create a culture, look at continuous improvement as we go forward. Um, and also, I think what's really important is no one really talks enough about the challenges because it is not easy. Um, it would be great. And I think in the past we have heard I had a fantastic panel uh, a few months ago with, with Darren Walker of Ford and others who are really talking about the challenges that people do face in honestly addressing race and, and racial issues. And I think it's very important to have more leadership dialogues about really what the challenges are, but also what the opportunities and the breakthroughs can be. So it's about changing a system, but it's also about changing a culture. But I just want to say it all starts with you, the business leader, because you set the tone in the organization and you set the framework within which your business and people in your business will respond. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about something that's very important, operationalizing ideas, and we will get to that in a little bit. But one of the ideas that uh, I think that I found very interesting that you were bringing up as we, we talk about uh, diversity and inclusion programs is, you know, do they work? Do they help? Don't they? Um, hey, Brogan, over at Heineken, describe to me what the diversity inclusion program does and how it is focusing on its objectives. Yeah, for sure. I think um, at Heineken, it's a, it's a huge priority. And I think I was just really inspired by everything that uh, Thunder was just saying, because there's so much that needs to come from the top down. And, and I can say that from a business perspective, it really is a priority at a business like Heineken to in, improve that um, in, improve inclusivity and diversity in the workplace and diversity at Heineken is also about gender and it's also about race um, but inclusiveness you know really about bringing kind of your 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 best self um, best self to work so I think the company now for the first time for example I've seen they want to put more active targets on how we um, how we recruit people in terms of increasing the diversity in candidates because as you mentioned, sometimes that's one of the biggest issues is actually just getting the right pool of people um, to apply for the job. Um, but on a personal level, I think you, what you were just saying on diversity inclusivity, for me, this also stems from how we bring new voices into the organization. So how do we recruit talent from different backgrounds? Uh, how do we, uh, through graduate programs, how do we increase the number of people coming in and, and, and getting new people with new ideas and not just uh, bringing kind of new excitement and new ways of thinking into, into the company. So I believe these are kind of big priorities that we're now um, looking at. Very important. And for businesses of all sizes in Royal, one of the things I think about uh, as I was working through my first and second documentaries, obviously Jeremy is the man when it comes to that. I really enjoyed watching his documentary, his first one, um, is that who you hire matters, even if you're only hiring five people or 10 people. And, and so for our first movie, for instance, our core film crew were all female of color. Uh, because in my business, you don't see that. I mean, in 20 years in broadcast news, I've never had one photographer that has not been male. Not one. And that's an example of diversity and inclusion. So you got to do your little bit. Uh, give us some of the tips when you're at as a small business, Roya, what you would suggest to others about really thinking and living and making choices as an organization that that understands and respects diversity and inclusion. What would be one of your tips as a as a small business? I think that we have to create an environment that everyone, regardless of who they are, they feel like more comfortable. They feel that they can are the part of this small families, especially with my own company and as well in the foundation. We create an environment that everyone equally treated and equally we create a workplace that support everyone. And they that's why it is uh, building, uh, you know, um, another things that we can do is uh, creating the cultural events. And, you know, we have uh, creating also getting the collective inclusion feedback regularly about uh, the works that we do. And, you know, with those feedbacks, we can improve a uh, bit. But um, 
especially for tech, I think that we needed to be inclusion. We needed to be diverse. There are so many products that existed today in the market that uh, mostly made it by only one group by men and we needed more women to get involved and that's why my organization are more focusing on educating young women to becoming the next technology scientists and uh, they get more involved with some um, area or industries um, so.